Welcome to this week's video. I am so excited to talk with you today about the rubber band effect. This is something that I learned about very intimately when my husband was going through cancer and we were trying to use whole food plant-based nutrition and uh, a few other things to help his body heal. And we learned a lot from that experience. Um, but one of the things I learned about was this rubber band effect that happens when we make extreme behavior change overnight. And even if our life depends on it, what I've seen and learned is that extreme change overnight tends to not serve us for the long run. So I'll share more of that story with you today. And whether you are using plant-based nutrition or other lifestyle um, choices to reverse lifestyle disease or even just to lose weight, um, this video will be really, really great for you if you tend to be maybe that all or nothing personality, um, but maybe you're not sure if that's going to work for you this time around. Some of us, we can just flip that switch and do it, but most people need to keep an eye on sustainable changes. We're going to talk about the dangers and what sets you up for the rubber band effect? Because I want, I want to help you avoid that. If this is your first time seeing these videos, welcome. My name is Danielle Dinkelman, and I am a National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach, and I'm a plant-based nutrition educator. I do these videos every single week inside my YouTube channel and my free private Facebook group, Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube or joined us in the Facebook group, we would love to have you there. We put these videos out every single week and we have lots of other things going on inside the Facebook group that will support you in healthy living as well. So be sure to find us there. Let's talk about the rubber band effect. Um, honestly, rubber band effect is simply this idea that, you know, if you, if you had a rubber band and, and you pulled it as far as you could, you know, how long are you going to be able to hold that before your hand gives out and that rubber band is going to snap right back to where it was, it's going to be pretty painful coming back. And we basically set ourselves up for this, like I said in the beginning, when we make extreme changes in a short amount of time. Now, this can come from a few places. Like I said, it could be because maybe you have high cholesterol that you need to get under control. Maybe um, you, are, you have type 2 diabetes and you're trying to you know, decrease the amount of medications you need to be on to manage it. Um, maybe there's certain outcomes that you want and you want it as fast as you can get it. I get it. I understand. Like I said, I went through this with my husband who was diagnosed with cancer in 2017. And we chose natural ways of handling his cancer for a whole year before he finally burned out from all of the extreme um, changes that we had made in his lifestyle to support his body in combating his cancer. Um, it simply wasn't sustainable. And as soon as the changes we had made for that cancer start to, took a, to take effect. We saw it on the scans, things started to look better. Doctors said, wow, this is strange. Cancer doesn't go away without chemo. We went home, did a victory lap, and you know what? All of the efforts, all of the habits that got us that result, actually the behaviors went away. All of the old habits came back and and guess what? The cancer came back too. So I use this as a cautionary tale. Um, and I was actually going, I was just finishing up my coaching training. Um, well, I would say the first part of it, the first half of it, when I was supporting my husband through this time. And it became so clear to me that we have to make healthy changes, yes. And we know, we know what we need to do in order to reclaim our health when it comes to lifestyle change, nutrition especially, it's so powerful. But what about the how? You know, our how needs to be sustainable. It needs to be rooted in behavior change science, in habit, and creating new ones rather than just leaning on willpower to white knuckle our way to better health. Um, so, so let's talk about this a little bit more. I see this a lot 
um, spilling over from diet culture, you know, so to maybe shift away from lifestyle disease over to just wanting to lose weight. Um, I meet with people every day that are frustrated and that their body is not responding to um, the things that they wish it was. They, they wish their body would release the weight. So they go stronger, harder, deeper, more and more extreme, trying to strong arm their body into losing weight. Um, dieting teaches us to do this, right? That is diet culture. That is dieting mentality that teaches us, oh, well, if it's not working, just be more perfect. And we have to be careful here. Of course, there's things we can do. Of course, there's things that we need to learn and understand about food and about our bodies. But be careful of going to such extreme lengths to shrink your body, as a good friend of mine says, um, to force that weight loss to happen. Because if you're doing it with unsustainable behavior change, Guess what, even if it does work, even if you do lose the weight, you're still setting yourself up for that rubber band effect, right? So I, I would say beware of chasing the finish line, okay? Beware of being so focused on getting to that number on the scale or getting even to those numbers with high cholesterol, diabetes, these things, of course we wanna move in that direction, but if we are so focused on that one outcome, and, and here's the other thing, if we will go to any length to get it, guess what? You're probably not setting yourself up for a sustainable lifestyle change, All right? So I just, want, I just want to open your eyes to this and help you be aware, are you setting yourself for sustainable changes here? Um, beware of huge effort because huge effort sometimes can lead to huge burnout. That's really what I saw with my husband. Um, he was exhausted. I mean, we had changed every aspect of how he was feeding himself. And it was extreme. It was an extreme change for him. And while all the things he was doing was healthy and good, for him, they weren't sustainable because of where he started. He was not quite both feet in standard American diet, but he had one foot firmly still in that camp. So it was a big jump for him. And maybe it's a big jump for you to go 100% plant-based. Heck, maybe it's a big jump for you to go 75% plant-based right now. You know, so I would, I would be mindful of where are you starting and what's just one strong step that you can take in the direction of what you want. You know, don't feel like you have to do it all overnight, all right now. In diet culture, um, we we tend to obsess about the end result, and it's in the end result we want we want that before and after picture, right? We want to be the success story. Um, we want to be able to, you know, send out that social media blast, saying, "Hey, I lost the hundred pounds, the hundred and fifty, the seventy-five, whatever your number is." I know that you want that, but but it may be time for you to stop killing yourself for that before and after picture. You know, really what this is about um, is focusing more on the process than on the outcome. And if we focus on the process, guess what? The outcome will take care of itself. It will. And you know, if you feel like you can make small changes right now, guess what? In a month from now, those are gonna start to feel more like a new habit and then you'll be able to add on the next layer of changes. It's okay to piece this together. It's okay to build on this in layers upon layers, okay? I'm gonna leave you with one last thought. It's, it's, it's more helpful to think about this journey as building health rather than losing weight, okay? I would invite you to just flip that around a little bit. If you are so focused on losing weight, losing weight, losing weight, what if you just built health? What if you just grew health, fed health instead? You know, does, does that feel different for you? You know, sometimes it really, really matters how we're just thinking about this. And, you know, I'm always on the lookout with my coaching clients. Are we still looking at this from a diet culture standpoint? Are we still in that camp where we're trying to be perfect and it's this all or nothing, go big or go home, mentality. I, I'm always on the, look at that, on the lookout for that because 
if I'm seeing those thoughts and those mindsets coming up for my clients, chances are they are, they're stretching a little too far. Um, maybe their expectations are, are a little too high for themselves. And, and, you know, of course it's, it's great to, you know, to, you know, put your foot down and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm really going to start taking care of my health and wellness. And I want you to do that, but I want you to do it in a sustainable way. You know, if you want to dig in and do the work, do the work to build the habits. Don't do the work to just strong arm and white knuckle your way to better health. Create habits. And that's basically like putting your health on autopilot. It's so powerful. You know, I'm, I'm actually um, going to be launching a book on Amazon called If Diets Don't Work, What Does? And that is going to be coming out toward the end of March. So keep hanging out with me. Join us in the Facebook group. Subscribe on YouTube. We will keep you um, in the loop on that. I'm really excited because we're going to dive even more into this whole idea of, okay, how do we leave dieting behind truly? Not, not only the diet itself, but the way that dieting teaches us to change and teaches us to be healthy. Um, I'm excited to share that with you. So stay tuned and um, you know, join us in the Facebook group, subscribe on YouTube, and until then, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.